Wednesday, guys. So, this morning, we are going to be chatting about the respiratory system. So, um, this comes at a great time, as last week I had somewhat of an issue with the respiratory system. You guys remember that we are going to be talking about the vocal cords, which are located in your larynx. Good morning, Wendy. And so, we're going to be talking about those a little bit um, today too, but first and foremost, um, if you are watching this on the replay, will you hashtag replay for me or hashtag time and compass? I really appreciate you guys tuning in um, and joining me. I know that it's early and so I get a lot more replays um, when it's a little bit more convenient for you guys and I completely understand that. So I also wanted to give you guys the opportunity um, to know about a special that's coming out so I'll be starting a meal prep with me um, class that's live once a month. And so the first one of those will be not this Saturday, but next Saturday. So stay tuned um, for that. I will be posting out something for that a little bit later this week in regards to a link. But if you are interested in that, let me know in the comments below. And then that way I can make sure to message you specifically. So if you are someone that um, needs help with meal prepping, that feels like it's something that you want to potentially start, but you feel like you don't really know where to begin with that, that is a great way to be able to have that journey kind of initiated. And so you'll be able to interact with me live and ask questions and things of that nature. If you have specifics, I'll be putting out a menu and then I also have a bonus for a rewrapping your holiday leftovers and so that will come at a great time next weekend so then that way when Thanksgiving comes up you'll be able to take all of those leftovers and turn them into something different without having to meal prep or cook for the next week so um, I'm super excited about that and giving you that option as well um, speaking of lives and interaction we do also have a real healthy housewives webinar coming up actually Friday the day before the meal prep um, and so that is going to give you the opportunity to, to interact with five Trim Healthy Mama coaches and ask them personally questions that you would like to see answered. So a lot of times when we have webinars and things of that nature, everybody's like, well, you know, is that really something that I want to be, you know, involved in? Is that something that's really applicable to me? What are they going to talk about? And so that's a great thing with this webinar is that you're having the ability that when you sign up to ask questions already, and then those questions will be what our talk is about it will be about answering the questions that you've asked. And so you will have one-on-one -on -one access to be able to have those questions answered. And so I will put the link below in regards to that as well. Um, so without further ado, let's get started on the respiratory track. Okay, so when we talk about the respiratory system, a lot of times we think about what? The thing that makes us breathe, right? Which is our lungs, right? Okay. And so it is a network of organs and tissues that aid in breathing, right? Okay. And so it does this by allowing oxygen to come into our nose and our, and our mouth, depending on um, how we breathe. And then for carbon dioxide, so our used oxygen to be expelled out. Okay. And so we often think about lungs first and foremost when in all actuality like the digestive system that we think about our stomach and things of that nature when we talked about that last week it's actually the mouth that starts both of these processes and so in kind of studying this a little bit more in depth I wanted to talk about the comparison between the two and so both of them start with the digestive system and the respiratory system start in the mouth and so think about that the next time that you're thinking about issues with the respiratory system or the digestive system this all you know kind of interrelates with what happens at the very beginning with breath okay and so we're going to be focusing more on the upper respiratory system. So the things that actually come in and above the lungs, we'll get into those a little bit more next week. Um, so these are the ones that kind of get the short end of the stick. These are the um, parts of the respiratory system that oftentimes we don't think about are part of the respiratory system. Okay, so let's go through those. So the first thing is the mouth, like we talked about, or the nose, okay? So interconnected with that is um, the sinus and nasal cavities, okay? And so 
a lot of times when we say, oh my goodness, you need that, like you need a hole in your head. I know I tell my kids this all the time. I'm always saying, um, yeah, no, you need candy like you need a hole in your head. And so it's so funny because actually we do have holes in our heads. And if we didn't have holes in our heads, then, you know, we would have a, a much more um, concentrated bone mass. And so because of that, our heads would be heavier and would be harder to support. But then also the breathing would be different and not as efficient without the nasal cavities, okay? And so nasal cavities and sinus cavities are part of the respiratory system, okay? And so these actually start it. And so most of you guys already know this, but um, you do have when you first take a breath in. So most oftentimes we have inhalation that starts with the nose and exhalation that comes naturally with the mouth, unless we have some icky junky stuff kind of going up in here. Okay. And so the reason why we have icky junky stuff kind of going up in here a lot of times is because there is your body's process in regards to trying to filter out things that are potentially going to harm the lungs. Okay. And so this is your body's first mechanism in regards to making you be able to fight off infection. Okay. And so you have these lovely little nose hairs, which everybody loves, right? Um, these are actually supposed to be catching big particles of things that, um, would potentially be harmful if they made it further down. Okay. So this is another reason why we talk about um, with the digestive system, we had the esophagus, okay? And when we had the esophagus, it pairs um, with the windpipe, okay? Which is also the larynx, okay? And so we talk about last week, we said, oh, when things go down the wrong pipe, right? And so this common saying is when things go down the air pipe instead of the esophageal pipe, right? Okay? And so with that, know that from the larynx, before we even get to the separation of the two pipes, we have something called the pharynx and the pharynx is actually just your throat. Okay. And so it starts, um, it comes in and goes down through, and then from here it goes into the throat and then the throat actually separates into two passageways. One being the esophagus that would go down into your stomach and the other one being your larynx that controls the breath. Okay. And so when you have post nasal drip, when you have these things that are constantly going down, they are going into your belly. And so this mucus and the mucocus membranes that are actually in and filtered through your um, nose, the reason why that happens is for the germs that are caught in and through your nose, which is the reason why we have them to fight you know, that first line of defense, it's going to go down and into the esophagus and then the stomach acid is actually going to eliminate that. Okay. And so this is a first line of defense mechanism. So kind of when we talk about this, I want you to think back to where we talked about last week and we talked about something small called villa. Okay. And we talked about villa being in your small intestine and allowing absorption to come in and out. So we talked about, um, your stomach actually, you know, being something that was not permeable. So like if it was like a balloon and you poured water on top of it, it's not going to absorb into that, but your small intestine is quite different, right? Your small intestine allows for the nutrients that are in your body to come out of the small intestine through these villa and go in and through the rest of your body to give the nutrients that you need. Okay. So it's interesting to me because in the, digestive system, we had that, but in the other system, in the respiratory system, we actually have cilia. Okay. So cilia is actually these little whips that are on the actual nose that allow the systems to be, um, fighting off that infection. Okay. And so some of the things that the upper respiratory system often fights off are allergies, common colds, um, laryngitis, which is actually an inflamed vocal cord. Um, then we have pharyngitis, which is actually a sore throat. So you can be really fancy the next time you have a sore throat and say, I have pharyngitis. And everybody's going to be like, oh my gosh, what is that? Um, then we also have sinusitis, which of course is like the swollen inflammation um, infections actually in those sino sinus cavities. And so a lot of times, you know, we get upset with the fact that we have a runny nose and we get upset with the fact that these things become swollen, but it is the body's first response. And so do know that it's doing what it's supposed to be doing if it's catching these things and if it's causing this nasal run because it's trying to push out what's in it that could be harmful to you, okay? And so 
the other things that we kind of want to talk about when we talk about lung health, when we talk about, you know, respiratory system is, you know, if you guys have ever talked about um, seasonal allergies, one of the things that we often do is take a little bitty amount of honey that comes from, you know, our local farms and ingesting that has the pollen in it that helps build the immune system up to the common allergies that are within that area. So making sure that it's local honey is the key for that. But a little bit of local honey, I mean, little bitty bit in your tea or on top of your oatmeal or something like that could also help bring in those pollens and help your body start getting more acclimated to that. I know this is huge for me. Um, you guys know that we move around a lot as military. And so anytime that we move around, I feel like my allergies get so bad the first season because it's all new allergens. You know, it's all new things that are like pollinating at different times and different places. And so having that little bit of honey and bringing that in, especially in the spring when things start to bloom and I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm like sneezing out of everywhere. Um, that is one of the things that I have found that really helps with allergens in me. Um, the other things that could be potentially ingested would be beets and beet greens. Those are rich in nitrates, which um, help fight off lung infection. Um, then we also have peppers, which are high in vitamin C. If any of you guys are doing the baobab, that's also a great source of that as well. Apples actually have been linked to lower your lung decline, which would in turn um, have a decreased right de decreased risk of COPD. And we'll talk more about COPD and what that is next week. Um, but the other thing, which I think is really great here in the fall would be pumpkin. And so pumpkin contains carotens and antioxidant properties, which are going to also be great for lung support and health. And so that in a nutshell is your upper respiratory system. And so I hope that this was beneficial and helpful in some way. If you have some other questions about the respiratory system, let me know. Um, I can answer those below, but I will give you the links for the couple of things I had for interaction ways for um, you guys in the link below. And then I will upload this up and onto my YouTube channel and a link that too. And so if you guys missed any of these series or any of the other series for Wellness Wednesdays, you can um, have a quick playlist to kind of go back and look at those as well. So I hope this is beneficial and provides some type of information to you guys. I really appreciate you tuning in. Um, and if you have any questions, again, leave those in the comments below. Have a great and blessed day. Bye guys.